Bonjour à tous! Hi everyone! So today I had three classes starting at 8.15 a.m. Guys, I do not do well waking up early. <laughs> I got up at 6 a.m. I am not made for that life. <laughs> but the class is interesting! It's so interesting! Ancient Greece fascinates me, especially because this professor will go up in front of the class and say, Hey, by the way, what you've been told about Ancient Greece is completely wrong. <laughs> it's great! We talked about how there was this feudal setup in Ancient Greece and that serfdom was not just a middle-aged thing, like in the Middle Ages. It came from Greece as well. And they were not always treated very nicely. Um, it was so cool because everyone is sitting there like, oh, we're going to learn about ancient Greek history. No, you're going to learn about why some historians were wrong about Greek history. Oh, it's fantastic. I love it when someone stands up and says, hey, you know this thing that you've been taking for granted? It's wrong. <laughs> it just makes me feel like the system is rewriting itself because all systems every now and again need to rewrite themselves. I'm very much kind of an anti-institution person so anything that just throws everything in off balance makes me happy. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I just like seeing society kind of crumble in on itself in order to emerge better. Some people just want to see the world burn. Some people want to see it rise from the ashes. I am the latter. Please don't call me crazy. Well, okay. I am crazy. But that's not why. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I love about this class. You kind of look at things and you go, oh, it's not the way you thought it was at all. Actually, it's the opposite. Like, we had a presentation in the other section of this class on, um, Athens during the Peloponnesian War and this writer who had written something to boost the morale of the Athenians and everything positive he attributed to Athens <laughs> was wrong and it was actually the opposite. <laughs> it was so funny like Athenian society we see as this epitome of democracy this uh, hoorah equivalence for everybody. No. It's not how that worked. It was equivalent for everybody who didn't work in the fields all day because they had the time to go into the forum and debate. Okay? The people who had time to go in and meddle with the public affairs of the city and still take care of their own because guess what? They were not farming. They were not the people who didn't own land or had no home. Um, equality in that society was a lie and it was not a system based on merit either because guess what education was private yes only the rich could afford to educate their children okay okay let's just talk about that for a second uh, equality in general in that system was a lie like, the principles are always so good when you think about these revolutions that changed everything. And in practice, they're just not all they cracked up to be. That's why e e idealism... Bleh, I can talk. That's why idealism has so many problems. <laughs> I mean, you can be an idealist all you want. Just remember that reality does not cater to idealisms. That's just not how it works. Because... People are selfish and generally will do what they need to for self-gain, which is natural. It's survival of the fittest. It's Darwinism, right? So, I don't know. That sounds kind of pessimist, <laughs> but that's just a survival kind of instinct. If you can afford the education, if you can get yourself into politics and get yourself into that life trying to ch make changes, that's what you're going to do. That's what you're going to do. And you're going to do it to help the people you're around. So really, 
the poor did not have representation at all. And I'm willing to bet that very few of the quote unquote ruling class uh, didn't really think about them because they never saw them. It's not because they were just like, oh, they're poor, who cares? No, it's they didn't run into them. They did not meet poor people. That wasn't their world. So it's not that people are evil. It's that people only know what they experience. And back then, people simply stayed very separate. So there are my thoughts on that. <laughs> we had another expression class today. I love this class. I feel like I'm learning so much more French. Just because we have these expressions that we all write down and take notes on. I've got them in here. I think I've showed this to y'all. But yeah, I've added another page of expressions. So that's always good. I feel like I'm learning. I feel like I'm getting there and doing all right. Oh, also, because I have no strength, no willpower whatsoever, um, I think I showed you all the first one I got. And then, well, uh, <laughs> this happened. <laughs> I'm obsessed. I'm sorry. I can't help it. <laughs> They're so good. I love the way the series works because, like I've said in some other videos, Black Butler is about this guy, Sebastian and his master, Ciel, Ciel Phantom Heave. And Ciel Phantom Heave is a count in 18, no, 1902, 1903 England. So we're talking about the Victorian area, right? So basically, Sebastian is the butler this guy and he serves Ciel. Now Ciel sold his soul to Sebastian to serve him as a butler while he's alive and when it comes time for him to die his soul goes to Sebastian. That's the premise. Now I'm not going to spoil why because it's really complicated and I'm in the sixth book and I still don't know the whole story behind it so it would be useless for me to tell you. But Base, that's the premise. Sebastian is a devil and he is serving Ciel as a butler in this world. But Ciel is not using him as the typical butler. He's using Sebastian effectively to solve crimes as a personal kind of police officer to the queen. It's so ironic. He's doing good with the devil. It really reminds me a lot of this song by Five Finger Death Punch. Um, it's basically, well, the song is about army veterans. Um, wrong side of heaven and the righteous side of hell. Because these people have gone into war zones and have had to kill. They've had to do and endure awful things. And then they come home and everyone's like, but the war was violent, the war was vicious, and we should never do it again. The war was unjustified, war is always unjustified, and we should always be striving for peace. And then they wind up homeless or with PTSD that goes untreated or something else goes wrong unless they're really lucky. <laughs> and it's kind of like that. CL is doing everything right for the right reasons, but some would say with the wrong methods. I'll let you guys decide because I think it's pretty cool. It's fun to watch him progress because CL is 12 when you first start reading it. I think he turns 13 in the fifth book one it's either the fifth or the sixth one which is not a spoiler guys okay 
because there are like 30 of these books. Obviously, Sia lives. There's character dies of story ends. So, that is not a spoiler, don't yell at me. <laughs> but yeah, that's the kind of psychological thing I'm kind of into. And the weight of a soul. Oh, uh, it's profound, but it's easy to understand. That's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my little... But yeah, I will see y'all tomorrow. Have a good one.